What's up Nuggets, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here to do a quick video on some veteran PvP gear. I found this set to be really useful and wanted to share it with you. Number one, this set is not going to work for every one, every single build. It's intended for people that have just started PvPing, had reached veteran one or higher, and have some options to craft gear, obtain AP or alliance points to buy gear, and want something a little bit defensive, a little bit offensive, so that way they don't get nuked right away, but they feel powerful in combat. So I'm calling this the Magnern Armor Set. Thank you, Pink, for giving me that name. Let's get started. You showing what it is and how to get it. So we're on Inferno Nugget, I want to talk about this build and this setup real quick. Now, it's not for everyone, like I said, magical, tanky, and somewhat of DPS. So you're going to use two traits on your armor that you craft, which is going to be Magnus, is a four-piece set that I like to use. And so I craft Magnus, um, and I use Nernhone on it. Nernhone is going to affect your spell resistance. It's going to help you against getting fire damage, sorks that are using high magic burst, Anything that does magic damage will help you tremendously. Nernhone's probably going to get nerfed in the future, so enjoy it while you can. Trust me, it's very, very powerful. The four-piece gives you a nice spell damage, magic recovery, and max magic. For these builds, I typically recommend five heavy if you have access to the two-piece sets. If you don't, I usually go five light, two heavy. Like I said, this is for magic DPS, and... This isn't going to work for everyone, but it's going to work if you're just getting in here. Magnus is also not that hard to get a hold of. I think you need four to six traits to get a hold of this. I have a traits video as well. And then you're going to go to a crafting station here in green shade. Arno Glagla. They're both in all the factions, so you can look it up on ESO Wiki to find where exactly it is for you. This is just the one I go to. After you learn a certain amount of traits, boom, you can craft that piece of gear. Not too complex. So you're going to be able to get this pretty easily. Nernhone, maybe not so much, but you can also go with a different trait, which is Impenetrable. Impenetrable increases your resistance to critical hits by a certain amount. At Legendary status, where's my Legendary? I don't have any yet because I don't have any alloys taking donations. Um, it gives you about 200 resistance to critical hits, which is nice if you don't want to get bursted down. Let's say you're on Siege and you're dying all the time. Something like this will help you get defensive and not die so frequently. Also, it gives you a nice boost to spell damage, the Torch Pack does, the two-piece. So I highly recommend that. When I put my back bar on, I get that extra spell damage. Really, really powerful. Okay, and then you'll notice I have the two-piece headset. Blood Spawn, yeah, Blood Spawn. Two-piece headsets, Undaunted. You get the head running the dungeons, the daily dungeons, and you can do them over and over and over and farm for the exact head that you want the exact way and exact trait might take you one time might take you a hundred it's random the shoulder comes from the undaunted pledges these are harder to get a hold of because you can only do one a day per character luckily i have eight vr characters now so i can run it over and over though i have every single thing that i want a key thing to note here blood spawn i typically use on uh, classes that i revolve around ultimates like dragon knights I get my Battle Roar resources every time I use this, um, an ultimate, so it makes sense to use this set. Another set that I use is Engine Guardian, which gives you a flood of resources back randomly with that little drone you've probably seen on my, on my videos. That is very, very good for classes that need resources um, on demand. So that affords me the ability to go 5 heavy and 2 light. If you don't have access to that though, you can do a couple different things. You can go 5 light, 2 heavy. You can also craft one extra piece of Mag Magnus, so you get eight chance to eight percent chance to reduce the cost of spells, and you can also craft one extra piece of Torx. That's going to give you more health and give you a better chance to negate the spell cost. That's what I recommend for this setup. So hypothetically, you could run um, a five-two setup on everything here, including your one weapon, or you could run something else. But this is a good, decent mix of gear. This, everyone can get a hold of and craft pretty easily. Okay, so some of the other pieces of gear, you're going to need to use alliance points doing PvP actions. Cyrodiil's Light. This is expensive as heck, but it's powerful if you're a magic build. Incredibly. Look at the two-piece bonus. 
171 damage, enchanted with 64 spell power. This is where the majority of my damage comes from, just two rings. So how do you get this? There's a cheaper version. One is a VR-14 that I'm using, right? But you can actually get cheapy um, Band of Serial Lights VR-6 right here. So if you can't afford all that stuff, go here. And let's say you just started PvP. There's actually a decent set. Where is it at? Covenant's Ring for 33,000. These will drop in your Rewards of the Worthy just for doing PvP. So yes, it's only 83 spell damage, but if you can't afford anything else and you're starting to get these drops in the mail, use this sucker. It's not bad at all. It's VR10, so you can enchant it with a nice good enchant for spell power, and it gives you 83% spell critical. Also, or spell damage, excuse me. You can also find these a lot on guild traders for like 250 gold is all. So pick these guys up. So that covers the ring. And then you'll notice my back bar is kind of interesting. I have a flame staff of Torx pack for more spell damage. And then I have a sword and board dominions. This is also droppable in reward of the worthy bags. So it has impen on the shield and defending on the sword. So it's not going to do so much damage since it's not Nernhone, but defending does give me a nice boost in armor and spell resistance. And then you got the neck here. The neck also drops from Reward of the Worthy Bags, or you can buy the VR14 version. Reduce ultimate cost of 10% plus stamina recovery for block casting. Love it. Reduce ultimate cost. It's so vital to my build. Because my build, I have one really cheap bats, Bat Swarm. My back bar, I have a high magic or a high ultimate cost uh, standard of might. So I usually go my build Swords and Boar with an oh crap, really low cost ultimate. Let's say you're on a Templar. This could be Remembrance. You, if you're a Vampire, Devouring Swarm or a Clouding uh, Swarm. You basically can do this. Or you can even go kind of really, really low and go uh, the Nightblade, Soul Harvest, or Deathstroke. The options are limitless. But really, this gives me an oh crap moment. I almost always have an ultimate up. And I like to reduce magic cost since I'm wearing heavy armor. If I'm not wearing heavy armor, I'll go all spell damage here. So, recap. You're using four pieces of Magnus, which can be crafted, low trait cost. You're also using Torg's Pack, Impenetrable, a combination of Impenetrable and Nernhome. And you're going to try to get these Undaunted Helms every day. You can. Run them. If you're VR1, I like to save my gold keys until I reach endgame. Because you can keep a hold of your gold keys for a very long time. And then, as far as using your a AP or Alliance points, I would save up or also look for the Guild Traders for this stuff. It goes really, really cheap. If you can find this, this three-piece set right here, do a sword and board for blocking and resistance. You'll have a much better time surviving. Deltia, why do you use sword and board all in your builds all the time? It's really because a couple of passes. Reduce the cost of one-handed sword and ability, but reduces the cost of blocking by 30%. 30%. So that's why you can block a lot without re, uh, draining your stamina. As a Dragonite, I do like to pump up this champion point pass to reduce block cost even further. So look at that. I'm almost at 45% less block cost with just those two passes. So that's how I can get away with wearing heavy armor. Because guess what heavy armor has? You guessed it. Decreased stamina cost of blocking. There's another 25%. So taking on one enemy only, that takes no stamina away from me. Taking on five, I can still deal with it. Okay. Last but not least, I want to talk about consumables because they're very important to augment this build couple things you need to know about. Spell power. There's two really important buffs you need to run at all times, which is Major Sorcery. You can get Major Sorcery from using potions, or you can get it from using abilities. Everyone has access to this ability in the Mage at Skill Tree, which is called Entropy, or Structured Entropy, the, the thing that I took. So either you want to run Structured Entropy on your bar, one of them, or you want to have those potions that activate and give you that for 40 seconds. If you're really min-maxing your character, think about leveling alchemy. It's really the only thing that gives you a pure performance boost. 30% longer. I always say this in all my videos, guys, and I'm going to say it again. This potion lasts 40 seconds. Potion cooldown lasts 45. Guess what? That's almost 100% uptime. That's why I use it. So if you don't want to, if you want to run entropy, I recommend running tripods. This is going to give you a huge boost of health, magic, and stamina. But guess what it also does? It gives you that boost in regeneration. Magic, stamina, and health. Huge, hugely vital. 
So I run these all the time in combat. Yes, it's not cheap, but it does, does work. If you want to be ultra tanky, you can even run drinks. I like the buy stat drinks because they give you almost 500 recovery. So if we did this, took a drink, and we use a tripod for the regeneration, look at that. Almost 2k magic recovery and almost 1800 stamina recovery. And I still have 22,000 uh, 22, health. It's going to be very hard to kill me on this build. Very, very, very hard. And that's pretty much the build. If you wanna run food, remember that you get your damage from two sources, your max magic and your spell damage. So increasing both of these will produce more damage, right? So health, food, those things will do damage. If you wanna survive long, I definitely recommend drinks. You wanna be at least 22,000 health from what I've done. You can go uh, lower than that, but you're gonna be risk the chance of getting you know one shot. So if you're a Magic Nightblade or a Stam Nightblade, it's pretty risky, but you can nuke a lot of people. That's the build. So try to go get Nernhone. Nernhone you can find in Craghorn. It's only upper, only upper right here. And it's from the nodes, woodworking, clothing, blacksmithing. If you don't have it, you and your friends go get it. Get some crafting recipes and try out Magnern. It's an awesome build that everyone has access to. Yes, I will be doing the same thing for stamina in the future once I start playing some more stamina builds. Hope you enjoyed this video. A lot more to come.